Hello and welcome to another Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee video update. My name is Diane Miller and I'm a member of the committee. I am here today with our chair, Bill Lavallo, and also with fellow committee member, Bob McLaughlin. And we are going to be talking about the fields. Bob, in addition to being a committee member, is also on the Warrant Committee. Um, so we are very grateful for everything that you have done for the town and has Bob has also done a lot of research on um, all of what led to these fields, so it should be an interesting conversation. Um, Bill, I'm wondering if you can kick this off with a little bit of the history. Certainly. So we started with the, uh, the project uh, looking at different phases of construction, the size of the school. We realized right away that all the fields were going to be impacted that were at the high school uh, originally. Uh, why? We have a bigger school. Right. We, uh, although we reduced the paved area, we still had parking to contend with. And uh, the prior fields that were impacted weren't even right size fields to begin with, some of them. So when we got done shuffling things around east of Harris Field, we ended up with uh, looking at four, uh, four main playing fields. One was uh, the, what we'll call the rugby and uh, practice football field that we're standing on now. And then east of the school, we ended up with uh, a full soccer and lacrosse field. Then we had a softball field uh, placed, and then we have a baseball field overlaying with another soccer field. So, uh, and that's packing the site in. So, well, uh, ahead, Bill, I think it was like 160 meetings ago yeah. when we started <laughs> to focus on the footprint of this building was bigger and athletic space was at a premium. So we started to screw down on the, uh, on the uh, athletic fields. And as you just pointed out, some of the existing fields, which we were using as a, what our benchmarks had to be to replicate, they weren't even uh, regulation size. So that's a mistake right. we, we weren't going to make. Uh, we determined that uh, most of the playing fields would be on the other side of uh, west of the main building here, where the old building used to be and was demolished. And they were going to be multi-purpose. And we thought natural grass out there would be appropriate. And uh, matter of fact, it was sorted last spring, so it should be ready to go next spring. Let's hope. Well, so that's the plan. Let's let's talk a bit about materials because this was an important conversation that we had as a community and as a committee as well. The difference between sod and artificial turf. Well, we we we, we had the field that we're standing on, the so-called rugby field, and what do we do with this? And it, it had its unique problems and challenges. First of all, uh, we expected, and it turned out to be right, this is going to be a highly used field. It's right next to the field house. They're going to come out here for PT. It's going to be a practice football field. It's going to be a rugby field. It's going to get an awful lot of use. Uh, and in addition, although the sun doesn't show it now because it's late in the afternoon, but during a good lot of the day, this is in, sh in the shade. Mm -hmm. And to have natural turf and try to keep it in good condition would be very, very challenging. I did a little looking at the request of the chairman into uh, the, uh, the difference between uh, and the advantages and disadvantages of natural turf versus artificial turf. Artificial turf fields get used about 300% more than natural turf. And with the shortage of fields we had, that was a very compelling reason. Uh, in addition, you may remember, if you've been around here as long as I have, before... Uh, Harris Field was converted into artificial turf. It was used for home football games only four to five times a year. And every time I drive by it now in Concord Ave, it's being used. So there was a lot of compelling reasons to consider natural artificial turf for the field that we're on. And there were also some concerns as well, right, oh, in terms of well, different <laughs> systems. And there are like 13,000 artificial turf fields in the in the country and the great majority of them are the so-called infill in between the fibers that is the green was crumb rubber crumb rubber uh, is produced by grinding up 
uh, automobile and truck tires. And it's without question, there are some uh, elements and, and chemicals in the, in the uh, tires that are cancer connected. And that caused a lot of hysteria, frankly. The other concern we had, and I'll get to that in a minute, was injuries. But chairman asked me to kind of look in, and it was a bigger job than I thought it was going to be. I ended up with a 14-page report. I read there was an awful lot of peer review studies. I read not all of them, but I read 15 of them. And we were very fortunate in Belmont to have Julie LeMay, who was then chairman of the Board of Health. Right. I don't know if she's on the board. I don't know if she's yes. still chair. She happens to be a national expert on this issue of whether there was a connection between cancer and the use of, of creme rubber. Everything I read and everything Julie told me is there's no problem. Uh, the only way you could get it would be to swallow the, the rubber. And uh, it, it just was a, uh, a lot of paranoia. Uh, we have a, we're talking today in a very hot day. Yes, but there is another aspect of that crumb rubber that does uh, come into play, particularly in sunny days, right? There was uh, the, some of the studies say that one of the problems is uh, that it generates the heat and it doesn't dissipate the heat. We're in the Northeast. Most of the people who had that complaint were down in Arizona, where they have 110 degrees yeah. a day as we sit here mm -hmm. or stand here. So, uh, but the other the other concern. Uh, well, let me say this. Uh, we, I went out and I looked at other types of infill material. They had coconut uh, shells, they had walnut shells, they had uh, uh, ground up Nike sneakers. Uh, we settled upon a brock, which is wood. There are little wood chips here about the size of sand grains. And as a matter of fact, yellow pine, right? Pine. That's from southern pine, southern pine, which happens to be the same wood that you make toothpicks out of. So we're very satisfied. Uh, we have a very, very healthy field to play on. The other, in, the other concern that we had was injuries. Some of the first artificial turf fields, they were like a rug, and uh, there were a lot of injuries. They, they came a long way. When it came to this field, not only, uh, well, what we did to it be belt and suspender safe, this field underneath it has a shock pad, so that it's particularly safe. Absorbing the energy. Injuries. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, a lot of people say the best type of uh, and safest field to play on is natural turf. And that's probably so if it's, if it's Fenway Park or a golf course. Municipal fields and town fields, they're packed. They're they're packed. Yeah. Then they get play in one muddy day and you got ruts and you got got bare spots. Uh, you don't have any of that. It's just, you know, look around, look around this field. And as a matter of fact, health-wise, uh, you're probably better off if you fall down in this field uh, uh, than if you're on a natural field and you happen to be there the day after the geese were on there. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> the geese, what I was getting at is the, the, the geese that we have challenges with here uh, don't like the artificial turf. Right. So you won't find them on here. Right. So what so. about maintenance? What are the well, maintenance issues? Let, let me get in. Well, first of all, the cost factor came into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it costs about $900,000 or $100,000 for the field, and a natural turf field is about $350,000. But the trade-off is, and, and Jay Marquardt of the DPW uh, told me that uh, uh, it could cost to maintain in decent condition a natural turf field is like $2,400 a year. This is like $1,300 a year to, to maintain it. So that uh, Now, to be fair and honest, this is going to be good for 10, 12 years, and it's got to be ripped up and it's got to be replaced. So there is a cost coming that. But that said, the infrastructure, the shock pad, the fence and everything drainage, else, drainage, all that, drainage, stuff. all it's all the same infrastructure in place. So that it's it's a great decision we made, if I may say so. And there were benefits of that uh, that were tied in. So logistically, we had this field coming on because it's a part of phase one, yeah. and uh, two years ago before we had any of the other fields on the other side. So this this field has seen tremendous use. We were able to bring it on immediately, uh, as Bob alluded to. You can play on it right away. We did that, um, so that was an advantage. Uh, we see band on here now, right? Cheerleading on here. Yeah. I saw frisbee on here. Uh, so, and I see, as you said, PE comes out here. And the other great thing about these fields are you can, and I've seen this, playing on here in the rain. You can't do that in a natural field. You could come out here after a deluge. Is, you know, it drains pretty quickly. You're not going to do that on a playing field. So the, we've given uh, the, the athletic director of the school opportunities here to enhance their program 
uh, especially early spring, right? Yeah. Training, early spring, spring training. training. Is you're not going to be. You don't want to get on natural turf fields. You sure. chew them up. Yeah. They could uh, cycle through here on, on multiple uh, sports. So we have, I, I think, a, a, a win here with another artificial turf field uh, in great shape, adjacent to the school. Uh, Bob said, and and it's pretty darn safe. There you I, go. I want to bring one. At, I want to bring one other thing. Bob, you told me this, and we might see this later. You went around to other communities oh, yeah. to look at these in place. You found in all your research, and you took your shoes off, and you were feeling it <laughs> because people said, oh, my goodness. We were beginning to focus on Brock, yeah. and I found out there were two down in the sum of a, uh, that had just been completed. So I found them. Ways got me to the field. I got there. And I walked around. I said, well, i got to try bare feet. So <laughs> bare feet walked around. I said, that's the field for us. Very good. There you go. And so we are also going to be talking about the fields um, and the area in general west of Harris Field as well, because that's another whole set of issues. Um, so let's let's talk about that. All right. So now we are still in the rugby field. However, different position. We've got Harris Field and beyond that, west of Harris Field behind us. Uh, so west of Harris Field is an interesting topic. Um, currently, there is a soccer field and a softball field there today. And we had initially planned to improve those. Um, but we had to make a change. So, Bill, what happened? Well, let's just step back. Our, our plan was, back in 2018, to take those two fields that are used today, still used today, and make three fields out of them. So today there's a soccer field and there's a, um, and there's a softball field. And the idea was to create a soccer field, a softball field, and a baseball field, all right-sized, um, for sub-varsity level. And there were some challenges with that because we weren't getting more field space. So what we were doing was overlapping, overlapping. those. But that seemed to be a good solution. We have varsity that we just talked about, uh, basically east of the of school. We were putting uh, sub varsity on the other side. Um, but then we realized, Bob, that we actually couldn't move forward with well, that for one the, simple the, thing. There's a little issue in town no, known as the skating rink, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it did not move with great speed. They finally and thankfully it was passed, but it held us up in all of our planning and until they determined where it was going to be and exactly what fields would be left for our development, uh, we couldn't do a thing. So then, Bill, yeah. well, over here, to you. Well, here we are in 2023 at the end of our job, and now we, still, we, we certainly have clarity, finally, in 2023, the ice rink. But we are finishing our job. So there were three factors that required us to make a hard decision. One was that we established a budget but didn't go out to bid for uh, fields west of Harris Field for simple reason we didn't know, as Bob said, what was going on. Uh, but we set aside a budget of $2.2 million for that. Back in 2018. 2018, right, right. And then uh, when uh, time came that we could start evaluating the different options in 2020, we, we started to price it. And we found out that it basically doubled. So where are we going to come up with that, that extra money? In addition, we had a building COVID costs from 2020 on our mm -hmm. back as well. And uh, as that, that number was about $4 million, $4.5 million. But uh, we did get some relief from COVID. From ARPA, uh, ARPA, ARPA for the COVID costs, right? Uh, but it still wasn't enough to cover uh, mm -hmm. our, our gap. And it was a difficult decision, but the most practical seemed to eliminate the scope west of Harris Field for the reason, A, uh, we really couldn't move forward anyways, and we needed to close our project out. And, and two, we needed the, the money to offset some of our uh, building costs for uh, the COVID impact. So. Uh, that was a tough decision, but uh, the playing fields are still being used today. Uh, school department athletics uh, knows how to make that work overall. And uh, the ice rink is going ahead, and maybe after that they'll figure out how the disposition of the fields. Uh, but that won't be complete until the end of next year. We'll be, we'll be far gone from our project. Right, and in the meantime, we do have the five beautiful new fields that we did deliver as part of this project. So thank you very much, Bill and Bob, for this conversation. And thank you for joining us um, for another Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee video update. We will have another update soon uh, where we plan to talk about site plantings. Thank you very much. Thank you.